in our discussion. Now that we discussed the different types of high energy particle accelerators, let's take a look at this example that deals with the synchrotron accelerator. So the largest synchrotron accelerator available is called the Large Hadron Collider and it has a radius of 4,300 meters. Now if the synchrotron is to accelerate protons to a kinetic energy of 8 tera electron volt, what would be the required magnetic field when our protons have reached this kinetic energy to keep the protons frequency constant? Remember, what the synchrotron accelerator actually does is it continually increases the magnetic field inside that accelerator as the proton's velocity increases to make sure that the cyclotron frequency remains constant because as the velocity increases, the relativistic mass of that particle increases. So, let's begin by recalling the kinetic energy or the relativistic kinetic energy of a particle that is moving at a very high velocity v. So, the relativistic kinetic energy is given by taking the product of the rest mass energy mc squared and gamma minus 1, where gamma is given by this ratio, 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared. So, we can take this, plug it in for gamma, we get this equation. So this is the relativistic kinetic energy of the particle given by this quantity. C is the speed of light in a vacuum 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. V is the velocity of that particle, which we don't know. M is our mass of the proton. And C, once again, is the speed of light in a vacuum. So let's begin by calculating what the velocity is. But first, First, let's calculate what the factor gamma is. So basically, we can use this equation to calculate what gamma is. So let's divide both sides by mc squared and then bring the negative 1 to this side. So we get k uh, divided by mc squared is equal to gamma minus 1. We bring the 1 to this side. We have gamma is equal to k divided by mc squared plus 1. So we can plug in our kinetic energy. So we must first convert from from, ter uh, from tera electron volts to joules. So we take a tera electron volt, we multiply it by 10 to the 12 electron volts in one tera electron volt, and then we multiply it by 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 joules per electron volt, and we see that this is the energy in joules. Then we divide this energy in joules by mc squared, where m is 1.67 times 10 to negative 27 kilograms, the mass of the proton multiplied by the speed of light in a vacuum squared and then we add 1 to that and we get 8516 so this is our gamma factor and now we can use this equation to calculate for our relativistic velocity so gamma is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared divided by c squared so let's First, bring this to this side, bring gamma to the other side, and take the square of both sides, and we get this result. So now let's rearrange and bring the v squared divided by c squared term to one side. So v squared divided by c squared is equal to 1 minus the square of 1 minus gamma. So now we bring c squared to the right side, and we take the square root of both sides, and we get this equation. So we know what c is, it's 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And we know what gamma is, it's 8516. So if we plug these values in, we can approximate that the velocity of the particle, the proton, is about 2.999 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So now let's move on to step three. So we know that what the synchrotron accelerator does is it keeps the frequency constant by increasing the magnetic field.
So let's calculate what the frequency of our particle is when it has this much kinetic energy, that is, when it has this velocity. So the frequency is equal to 1 divided by the period, and the period is given by taking the circumference and dividing it by the velocity. So 2 pi r divided by v. So v is given by this, r is the radius of 4,300 meters. We plug that in and we find that the frequency is 11,100 hertz. So in the final step, because this frequency remains constant, we can use this equation. So the frequency is equal to QB divided by 2 pi gamma multiplied by M. So we rearrange and solve for the magnetic field B. The magnetic field B is equal to the frequency of this quantity multiplied by 2 pi multiplied by gamma. This quantity multiplied by the mass 1.6 times 10 to negative 22 kilograms divided by the charge 1. 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs and we get that the magnetic field is 6.2 teslas. So this is our magnetic field at the end of our acceleration when the proton has accelerated to a kinetic energy of a tera electron volts.